Good afternoon. Welcome to the Socks for Mom podcast. My name is Becky. I am your hostess today. Please go get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Sit down with your knitting or your crocheting and visit with me while I share with you anything fiber related. You name it, whether there's thread, yarn involved. I love to do it from embroidery to cross stitching to knitting to crocheting. That's my cup of tea. And I like to do a little bit of making, which we will also talk about. So my name, as I said, is Socks for Mom. And you can find me on Instagram as Socks for Mom. And you can find me on Ravelry as Socks for Mom, where we have a group for this podcast. And I have a blog that I started back in 2005 called Knitting in the Rockies wordpress.com but all that administrative stuff aside let's jump into socks because that's my name socks for mom um, back in 2005 I was knitting three pair a month I don't do that now because uh, several years in I happened to read a blog post that talked about this this young woman shared about how she thought it was crazy that people would only limit themselves to socks or only limit themselves to hats when the whole knitting world was at their fingertips. Well, that kind of challenged me and that got me going in a lot of different directions and it has not stopped. But let's start with socks because I have a needle review, a couple needle reviews I want to talk about a pattern rewrite and as I mentioned when I was digging in my UFO pile I saw some orange and I brought up out of the basket some socks that I had started. I have no idea when I started these. They are the Linnea socks by Rachel Cooper. Koopnitz is her name on Ravelry. I love her designs. This pattern is not for the faint hearted. Um, it's worked on size zero needles because you cast on quite a few stitches. Here it is, here's mine. And I have knit these in some very lovely wool mesa. Um, yarn from Germany. It's a hard working yarn. The dyer dyes beautiful colorways. I think this is called Campari. It's a vibrant orange. And as you see, these are very, um, there's a lot of intricate work here. And to do that, I like to use very strong needles that will not bend. And I am using some old needles in my stash. I'm using some Addy, I think it's just they're still pointed needles, size zero. My only pair of size zero needles, other than some Addy circulars, which I really don't even care for the old Addy circulars. So I was working on those 15 minutes a day and I have a pair of vanilla socks going all the time. And I started a pair of toe up socks. And I started these, um, this is a Susan B. Anderson design. It's from her class on Craftsy with a afterthought heel you see that red there I will come back and rip that out and it will be an afterthought heel it's knit on 56 stitches which I can pull that off on 2.25 uh, millimeter needles but I thought the gauge looked a little bit loose and so I measured it and it was actually measuring at an eight and a half stitch no, not eight and a half. Um, seven and a half. I, actually, now that I'm telling you guys this, I think I went in the wrong direction. It wasn't as tight as I wanted it. I think I totally went in the wrong direction. Ah, gauge. Anyways, 
I thought it was going to be too loose, whatever it was, so I went down to a size zero. And I liked the fabric. I really do like the fabric. But on 56 stitches, by the time I knit the one by one cuff, I could not get these over my foot. And so I think probably a size zero needle is not going to work for me on a 56 stitch um, sock. I'll see when I put the heel in, but I ripped back the cuff. I'll put a two by two in on a 2.25 millimeter needle and see if that works. All of that to tell you, I thought I was going to start knitting socks on size zero needles. And so I ordered some because I only had that one pair. I ordered some Knitter's Pride Zing and I ordered the infamous Flexi Flips. Now the Flexi Flips are the new and hottest needle on the market. They have this cord in the middle here. They are supposed to theoretically be a combination of magic loop and working with double point needles. However, you only have three needles, so you're not messing with all the, the needles. It's flexible in the middle, so you can pull that off. You basically knit across one needle and you flip it around and knit across the other needle and that's all you do. That's why they're called flexi flips. They're flexible and you flip them back and forth and you don't have to mess with the long loop you pull out for magic loop. Now I like both methods. I like to do magic loop. I like to do double point needles. I no longer like to do knitting on two circular needles though because I have found out that since I'm a magic looper, I'll just whip that, on, that thread on out and I'll have uh, stitches on loose without a needle on them. So anyways, I had very high hopes for these, very high hopes. And I'm probably going to say what you've heard a lot of other people who have said, who have bought these say, um, they're not so easy to use. They have a few issues that I think once you learn how to use them and work around those issues, I think they'll be great. I think they will be great for vanilla socks because uh, just let me tell you what happens for me. Now something, I have changed my knitting style. I have changed my knitting style without planning to change my knitting style. And this is probably, you're probably gonna think this is like a senior moment kind of thing. But I have discovered that when I knit, because I knit both continental and I flip English style, I don't flick, but I throw, um, I'm starting to interchange both of those methods fluidly throughout any project I'm working on. So, and I do it without even realizing I'm doing it until I catch myself. I will get to a stretch of plain stockinette and I start, I flip over to continental. I get to a texture pattern and because I'm not as proficient doing the purling with continental, I'll flip back to throwing. Or if my fingers start to hurt, I'll start to knit continental because that's easier on my joints. And when I realized this, I thought that's probably not a good thing to be doing. I need to stick to one or the other, but not combine both of them in one project. So all that to say that because I'm proficient with both of those methods, I tried both of those methods on this not doing the combination thing <coughs> that I just told you about. But I tried knitting socks continental on these and I tried knitting socks the English throwing way. And this is what I discovered. 
So for English throwing, this did not work very well for me. And the reason is because when I would be knitting across the front needle, this front needle kind of got in my way when I was trying to throw, you know? It's like flopping around and I didn't like that. But when I knit Continental, I could tuck it down and I was able to do that much, much easier. So I think for me, it will work using it the Continental style. Now I think you can, I think there are ways to do this, but the other thing I found was this back needle was bothering me. So I would hold the back needle down like that. So the jury is still out. I'm still trying to figure out how to use them. Um, something I've heard people mention is that they don't like the fact that one tip is sharp and the other tip is blunt. That does not bother me. I don't really even notice what tip I'm using, to tell you the truth, because I'm knitting plain vanilla socks. Now, if I were knitting something like this um, Linnea sock, I would notice that because you need a sharp tip to knit through the back loop and to do all this cable manipulation. But that aspect of the, of the needles is not really bothering me very much. I can live with that. Um, plus there's a way you need to pull the needles out to make all that work. So Addie probably should have stuck to just a sharper tip. These tips, by the way, are sharp, but they're nowhere near as sharp as the um, Haya Haya Sharps, just in case you're wondering. Here they are. Like I said, I still have very high hopes for these. I really want to make them work because it would be nice just to have the two needles. It would be nice not to be pulling the thread out and all that. So, Flexi Flips. Addy Sharps, I mean Addy Steel Tips. And the other needles I forgot to mention that I have, which was why I needed to order some, is I have these, um, these were also called Flex Tips, I think, by Addy. And I like these a lot, but they bend, and I, they are bending. So for a sock like Linnea, I could not do that. All right, so the next thing I have on the sock needles, I have a pattern that's been out on Ravelry for a long time. It was a pattern I wrote that I used for my husband and I, and it is the chili pepper pattern. And this sock has been used a lot for beginning knitters. I've given it to friends. Uh, yarn shops have handed it out. Uh, I've used it in classes to teach knitting. Here my dogs, my dogs drink of water over there. It's called the Chili Pepper Sock. This is a very old sock I'm showing you. Very old. Probably the original sock. It's Osterman Step, and you can see it's held up pretty well. So this sock pattern has this kind of rib on it, which I thought was interesting, not boring. It has the heel that you, you guys know I like with the three-stitch garter stitch, and it's a um, Aya Partridge heel. And for the toe, it has the, I've heard this called the whirlwind toe. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but you basically divide the sock into segments and you decrease down like you do the top of a hat. And you don't have to Kitchener, you just pull the stitches through. So I had this sock out on Ravelry and um, people have knit it. And then when I started doing the Wonderland socks, I decided I would go ahead and revamp that pattern, make it prettier. And when I did that, I altered this pattern slightly. 
I, for, I left out an asterisk, which changed the pattern totally so that the heel wouldn't work. And all of a sudden, I had a lot, not a lot, I had two people contact me. Now, there's been a lot of activity on this sock on Ravelry. I don't know what's going on, but there, one day, 762 people downloaded it. Another day, 300-something. Um, it's a free pattern. But the reason I'm telling you about it, there's two reasons I'm telling you about it. I fixed that error for that pattern because I wasn't sure which pattern people had downloaded and I left it out there for a few days and then I pulled that pattern down and I went ahead and I put the original sock pattern up because this is the one that all the pictures are and this is the one that people used who have put up project pictures. So I'm telling you this because if by any chance you're watching this podcast and you have downloaded a version that you started and all of a sudden you go back and that it's a different version, please contact me. Contact me on Ravelry. Send me an email. My address is socksformom at gmail.com and I will get you that pattern. But this is the pattern that will be up on Ravelry. This is the one I will offer support for if anybody has problems. The other one was kind of a fluke, I think. Not a fluke, but, you know, a mistake, I guess, really. So that's the one thing I want to tell you about this pattern. But the other thing, I am doing a little experiment. By accident, I discovered over Christmas, I had knit my daughter a pair of socks on 64 stitches with some Knit Picks Felici. I think it was the mint, chocolate mint colorway. And she didn't really like that color combination. And my husband tried them on and the sock fit him. So all these years I've been knitting, I've been making socks for him with 70 stitches cast on or 72 and they do end up baggy on him and when I saw that the 64 stitch fit him, we came back, looked at his socks and I'm going to start knitting his with fewer stitches. So what I want to do is I've cast on these for me. This is the chili pepper socks. And I, and this is the yarn, it's Drops Fable. I've cast these on in a size zero needle. The pattern is 63 stitches. It's an odd numbered pattern because of the way the ribbing does. I don't know if you can see that. But um, I'm gonna knit this pair for me on a size zero and I'm going to knit him a pair on a size 2.5 and I think that's going to work for him and then I won't have to knit as many stitches. I think this will work because years ago Interweave Press took all of, not all, some of their favorite pattern, sock patterns. It used to be that every issue they would have two or three patterns that I just had to knit. Well, several years down the road, they took those patterns and they put it in a book and called the book Favorite Socks. And instead of having multiple sizes, what they did was they would say, I think, I think I'm remembering this right. If you want a larger sock, use a larger needle. If you want a smaller sock, use a smaller needle. So if they can do that and that seemed to work, then I'm, I'm just gonna try this little experiment and I will let you guys know how that goes. So that is the end of the sock segment. Now, oh no, actually it isn't. I wanna show you something. My husband brought to me a couple socks that had, actually, I found a pair of socks in the trash can. And I pulled them out and I said, why are you throwing these away? He said, they've got holes in them. And I looked and they were the kind of holes that you don't 
get from wearing your socks out. They're the kind of holes that something really liked the taste of this sock and really wanted to eat this sock, if you know what I mean. Some insect or something was eating it. I have no experience with this at all. I don't know how to do this with things eating my wool. And I know some of you guys do deal with that. And if you have any tips, please educate me because I don't really know what to do. I have heard said that some people will put it in the freezer. Well, I don't want to store his socks in the freezer. What I did, I bought this cedar box from Knit Picks. And he's got five pair. It will fit five pair. I think for me, for my socks, I probably would be able to fit four in that. But I think I'm gonna order some more of these. I like how they're compact. Um, unfortunately, this one came with a crack down the side. I'm not sure if that was the fault of the um, UPS man or if that was already something flawed and they did not pack it right. I normally will send stuff back, get my money back or get an exchange, but I'm not gonna mess with that with this. But I think I am probably going to order more of these because I like this. $12.99 nitpicks. But please, if you have any ideas, let me know or put a message on our Ravelry group or send me a message or something because yeek. Okay, that's the end of the sock segment. Now, I got into a little bit of trouble or I was a very naughty girl since I was last with you. I don't know if you've ever heard this little poem. I used to say it to my daughters all the time. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. Well, I've been a little bad. I've gone crazy casting on things. And some of those things are not on my Make 9. So I'm going to come back in just a minute. I'm going to rearrange my desk and I'm going to share with you what I have done. I may not be horrid, but I wasn't good. <laughs> One minute. Okay, I'm back. The sun is really starting to come in bright and it will be brighter and brighter because this is the side of the house that the sun sets right there and I'll get a lot of sun here really fast. So I'm going to try to finish this up. I may have to get up and down to get stuff, but hopefully you'll bear with me. So um, where do I begin? I was listening. I like to listen to podcasts when I knit and watch them, as probably you do too. And I was listening to Claire of the Woolly Thistle. And Claire, every year, hosts a mitten knit along. And this year, you know, I found out about it last year when it was too late. And then I bought all the Selbu mittens from um, Ellie Skane Deer. Excuse me and I knit a pair. And so this year when it came around, I thought I've already knit a pair of mittens. I don't need any mittens. They're not on my make nine. What's on my make nine are the underwing mitts. And this is a mitten knit along. This is not a um, fingerless mitt along. And as I was listening to her talk, I went out to her Ravelry group. It's either the Wooly Thistle or it's in H Knits. I'll put a link right down there so you know. And Ellie, I mean, um, Claire was talking about how she had so many designers participating this year and they were offering coupon codes. So I went out there to, you know, to see who was offering coupon codes. And I saw 
that Erica Hauser, the designer of the underwing mitts, was knitting, was releasing a coupon code. And then as I read through the description of the knit along, Claire said that this year fingerless mitts would be included, that if you wanted to knit those, you could participate as long as color work was the predominant thing in them. So I thought, I've got to knit my underwing mitts. They're on my Make 9. I'm being a good girl. I'm using, I'm shopping from my own knitting store upstairs in my fiber room. And I can use yarn for this and knit these. So I went out and I, um, I think this pattern was 20% off. Let me tell you, now is the time to get your patterns because everybody, everyone I know that is a designer of mittens or fingerless mitts, they all have discount codes. And you can participate in the knit along too. It goes through the end of April. So I went shopping in my yarn store and I picked out these colors right here. Um, these were left over from my Colorado sun, Sunrise hat. They're Knit Picks palette. And I cast on last Friday, immediately after I bought the pattern. And I'm telling you, I love color work so much because it's like painting with paint by numbers. Here is what I've done. And it's very addictive because I wanted to get to the orange. I wanted to get to the orange. And then after I got to the orange, I thought, oh, I want to get the, the thumb um, off so that I can show you guys on my next podcast. So here it is. I still have, I think, four more rows to go and then I'll be doing the uh, ribbing around the top. But aren't they so cool? Here's the back. Now, I've heard several people, I saw um, Brooklyn Knit Folk and also the Gentle Knitter have knit these and they talked about them being kind of witchy with the moons going across the top. But that is not my take on these. In Colorado, every year, there is something that we affectionately called the Miller Moth Invasion. And for those of you who have lived there, I'm not really sure if this happened on the Front Range I know it happened up in the mountains, but every year Miller Moss would come and we would, we would have a storm door on the front of our door there and I would open the door and 20 moss would fly in. Or at night when we were watching TV and we had the shades drawn, you could hear them striking the window. Or when um, I'd be sitting there knitting, I'd look and I'd, there would be some moss in the lamp or I'd find them floating in my Scentsy wax or something. And so these are my Miller Moth mitts. And I'm gonna love them. I will use them a lot because they're fingerless mitts. And so the next time I see you, I'll probably have two pair. But do think about joining that knit along because this is the time to do it. And the first prize that was given out were these beautiful wooden mitt blockers um, that had Nordic stars cut out of them. So those are the Underwing Mitts by Erica Hauser. And I, will, I went ahead and decide, pulled yarn for my next project in that knit along. In case I finish these, I think they'll be done um, soon enough for me to cast on another pair. I may or I may not, but I pulled the yarn for it because I already had this pattern. This was part of the Knitworthy uh, Year 4 collection that Isolde Teague put out, and I did not have a chance to knit anything in that. 
but um, I love these. I saw someone knitting them in this knit along. And so I went ahead and pulled some colors. Let's see if I, let me pull them out. Uh, I have some of this Rowan yarn. It's, uh, you're not gonna get a good, good representation of the color. It's a very vibrant, beautiful, dark, dark purple. And then I have some mustard, which is Jameson Smith Spindrift. And then from Jameson and Smith, I have this. And I just think that will be pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, that purple will have flecks of the white going through it. So hopefully I'll get to I'll get to cast those on. Those are not on my Make Nine, but they are from Stash, and they are from a pattern that I already own. I'd feel really good if I got those knit up, um, but they're not. They're just dreaming. I'm just dreaming about doing this. So, how else have I been a naughty little girl? Well, here is my Make 9. I don't know if you remember, but I've crossed something off already. I crossed the Birkin off right here. Because of the issues I mentioned in my last podcast and the issues I continue to hear other knitters mention about it, and it just is not worth it for me to go to all that effort with very expensive yarn and to not have it fit. So I was watching the Bakery Bears. Oh, let me back up. Claire of the Woolly Thistle started talking about Jennifer Stein Gass was having a knit along and she had offered, the Woolly Thistle had offered a $50 gift certificate, which was the first prize in that knit along. And I immediately thought, I've got one of those patterns. Last summer, I started um, knitting the Sea Change pattern by Jennifer Steingass. And I stopped knitting it, not because I didn't like the pattern, nor did I not like the wool. The wool was Rowan felted tweed but I was knitting it in a cinnamon color, which is a color I had bought to make my husband a vest, and I am not, I don't wear brown things. And I thought, I'm gonna go to all this effort and I will not even wear this. So I quit knitting that after I had knit two sleeves last summer, and I went ahead and I bought some blue felted tweed. I bought this. And I already had this brown from the other one. And I was going to knit that sweater with these two. And possibly either a granite. I actually bought this for it, the top part of it. Or I may replace this darker color with like a clay color or a granite. But I thought, I, that really needs to be on my Make 9 list. Because that's a pattern I had that I really wanted to knit. So I put it back on my Make 9 list and I went ahead and I cast on. And since I have been with you last, I've gone ahead and I finished a sleeve. I really, really, really like this yarn. It's very soft. Um, and I've gone ahead and I started that. But as I was mentioning, I was listening to the Bakery Bears and she mentioned that Jen Steingast had just released her latest pattern. It was with fingering weight wool. And too bad it was fingering weight wool because she wanted to knit it, but it was fingering weight wool. Well, I went out to look at it because fingering weight is something I very much would knit because it's much lighter. And there was a coupon. <laughs> More about that in a second. 
but this is the Silver Frost Sweater by Jen Steingass, who is Knit Love Wool on Ravelry and on Instagram. And guess what it's knit out of? It is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which is what I had purchased for my Birkin sweater. The one that I wasn't going to knit anymore. So I now am going to knit this pattern, which I think I got this pattern for 30% off maybe. Um, she's running a special where if you buy two patterns, you get one free. But she's also, since this is her latest release, it's also on sale. So I'm going to knit this with the faded quilt as the main color and this tint and this white fossil. And that will be cast on not anytime soon, but it will be cast on this year in place of the Birkin. It has a provisional cast on, so it's knit in a way I've never knit before. I believe you provisionally cast on, um, you do a provisional cast on on the widest width, and then you knit the yoke, and then you unzip the provisional and knit down. I think that's what it is. I have not studied the pattern really well. So since she was having a sale, the other thing I bought was because I heard the Hawthorne Cottage Crafts gal talking about this sweater. Now you're seeing how this works, right? They all talk about different sweaters and you all want to go buy them, um, which is fine. It's the Fern and Feather sweater, which is knit in a worsted weight. And I had yarn that I'm trying to get rid of, some Cascade 220. I've cast this on. This is my yarn. It's a slate blue. And I'm using a natural. And I am halfway through the yoke. This would be a very good beginning um, stranded work pattern. Now, I am very confident with Jennifer Steingass's patterns because she has so many yoke patterns and something that I've heard people talk about is she will do short row increases on the back. She has bar, um, bust, she adjusts for the bust and the waist and you can have a more fitted sweater and I just think she really knows her stuff really good. And this will be a heavier sweater, but I have worn the heck out of my uh, Cascade 220 Tinder cardigan that I knit last year. I use it in lieu of a coat because it's lighter weight than a coat, but it's just as warm as a coat. Now this I don't foresee wearing around the house except maybe on a really, really cold day. But I can see myself outside going for walks with this instead of a coat. So this is the Fern and Feather sweater. And I believe that that is it for my sweaters. I've got two on the needles. I've got the sea change. I've got the Fern and Feather. I am dreaming and prepared to knit the silver frost with my Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I am dreaming about my um, Isolde Teague mittens down the road. I'm finishing my underwing mitts. And the last thing I want to share with you guys is what I am making from the Making Magazine. This is the magazine, and I absolutely adore these magazines. There's so much in them. This is published by Matter in Maine. 
Um, there are projects for knitters and makers. There's knitting, sewing, embroidering, crocheting, quilting, and more. And what I wanted to knit first from this particular edition, and I do believe there's a new edition that has just come out. Um, the Patterns by Susan B. Anderson, who is the knitting guru of children's knitted toys. And it's the Sleepy Kitten set. And I wanted to knit this for my grandchildren. Um, you make a little sleep sack for each one of them. I wanted to knit the striped one in orange and white because my little grandson loves anything orange, anything and everything. He will go for the orange of whatever it is you have. But these are just precious. I finished the first kitty and here she is without a face. I'm knitting her in some yarn I got um, at Joann's, I believe. It's called Premier. It's an acrylic and it's soft and it's washable. I have to put her little face on her and her whiskers. Then I've got to knit her dress and make her sleep sack and get her on the way because her birthday was last week and I did not get this off to her. I have purchased two other books to go with it. Donna of In a Pickle Knitting shares all these incredible books that have fiber, uh, children's books that have fiber stories in them. And Donna, in case you're watching, I this, um, this kitty is going with Wolber and she's going with um, what's the other one called? Did I bring them in here? I think it's from um, from sheep to yarn and it tells explains the whole process of uh, where we get our yarn from and that I'm just very excited about these books that you're sharing Donna um, I am going to be brainwashing my grandchildren with yarn and I have already started to teach my granddaughter knitting and I think my little grandson is really going to be more interested in it because he's all about the tools and he's all about using his hands and he's only two and my goodness he's just a little pistol. So um, that's what I wanted to share, you, share with you guys from the making book. The last thing I want to talk to you about is a little bit of master knitting. Hold on a second. I'm not turning the camera off. I will be right back. I think the sun's going to come in any second now. So the last thing I want to share with you, when we last were together, I was talking about cable flare. Um, this is from my master knitting program that I'm enrolled in. Um, and I shared a little bit about cable flare last time with you. And I also told you that I had to re-knit a swatch because I had, um, I had read that the, um, I needed to have a more complex pattern than I actually did. And I showed you pictures of what I thought I'd use and I have knit that up. Here's this swatch. And you can see the cable flare happening down there and up at the top. You see how it's flaring out? That is because I have not put in a compensation for that at all. And that's what happens if you do not do that. And last time I talked about how the um, cable, the width of the cable, the stitch gauge of the cable is actually smaller than the stitch gauge of the um, seed stitch, right? 
And so what you have to do and what designers do when they design sweaters or um, different things that they design is they will have you increase stitches on this last row and then you have enough to work the cable and you'll work the cable then you will decrease down um, and go back to the original number and that will make that flare go away so I've got that swatch all done I've got the pattern written I thought I had lost all my notes on the pattern I put that up on Instagram I even the picture that I put up on Instagram I tried to enlarge it because the pattern was behind there to see what I had written and I just ended up brainstorming writing up the pattern um, and then I was going through some stuff I searched my entire house and I had filed it away with the chili pepper pattern when I was pulled out the chili pepper pattern to take a look at it lo and behold what is stuck on the back but my notes um, that I had written for this pattern. So I've written up that pattern and my next step, the thing that I will do before I see you guys again, I have to tell you, you're really motivating me to keep on keeping on with this because this is my very last swatch. Uh, 19 or 21 swatches and then I get to move on to the other aspect of the program. But I will be using this cable and I've measured it. You see my marking threads right there. I've measured it. I have knit my seed stitch swatch and I have measured the gauge of that. And I will do the math and figure out how many stitches I need to increase in order to work three of these cables across a big swatch piece. Now I'll write that pattern up and then I will be done with my swatches. But something I wanted to ask you guys about, and I'll need your feedback for this. I love this cable pattern, and I am very tempted to making this into a sock pattern with um, just reverse stockinette on either side, and then maybe a sweet little cable along the gusset part. Um, I think this is so beautiful. Now the thing about cables is they they pop the most when they're knit on a light yarn which is if you think about all the fisherman sweaters what colors do you think of? You think of them in their ecru color yarn and so you would have to have a light um, sock pattern so, semi-solid or solid to do this. Let me know what you think about that because I also really like this. And that would also be fun on a sock. Now, I'm probably just being caught up in the moment of because um, I've been working on these swatches, but let me know what you think if that's a sock that you might like to see in our Wonderland Sock Club. I will tell you that and I also need feedback about this. I am wondering if I am making these patterns harder than what you thought they would be when you purchased the Sock Club. Please let me know about that because I can certainly go with easier patterns um, that are more mindless maybe, more relaxing to knit than these patterns because I don't want to scare you off. I want you to enjoy the club. I want you to enjoy the patterns and I really would appreciate your feedback. So I will, on the thread that I will put for this podcast, please let me know. Let me know if you would like to see easier patterns for the Wonderland Sock Club and let me know if you would like to see a cable pattern like this in, knit up into a sock. Um, I am, the DFW Fiber Festival is happening in April in Dallas and they are having a master's day on Thursday, a master knitting day 
where the committee is coming and they, uh, they will be talking about the program. You don't have to be in the program to go to this. Unfortunately, I got I signed up too late and I'm on the wait list, which I really hope I could get in because I would dearly love to bring all of my stuff and let them look over it, which is one thing that they do on these master days. So I am hoping that they contact me and say, we've got a spot for you. Somebody dropped out. Anyways, that is it for today, friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. I've enjoyed um, talking to you. I really like to hear from you in our Ravelry group or when you send me private messages. Um, so you guys take care. Remember what Elizabeth Zimmerman always said, in the rhythm of the needles, there is music for the soul. So I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.